Whether you realize it yet or not, you will know by the end of this time that you are the show. You are the reason that our United Way is doing what it's doing and why we're able to support all of our community partners and do such great work. So we, we thank you for being here. We are absolutely thrilled you're here. And we hope that the only order of the day that you have to keep in mind is simply enjoy yourselves. I think you, can you handle that? That, no, can you handle that? All right, all right, good, okay. So we're gonna begin where we should. I'm gonna ask you to stand and remain standing for our national anthem. Please feel free to sing along and then remain standing and we're going to do an invocation. So please rise for the national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proud Please bow your heads. We meet to serve our community, to use our resources wisely and well, to represent all members of our community fairly, to make decisions that promote the common good. We recognize our responsibility to the past and the future and the rights and needs of both individuals and families as well as our community at large. As trusted servants, we seek blessings on our deliberations and on our efforts here today and every day thereafter. May we act wisely and well, as we know that in order to live better, we must live united. Then please help us, Lord, however we perceive you, every day and in every way to live united. Amen. Please be seated. I feel like we're in church when I say that, don't you feel it? Sure. A couple quick things uh, that I want to point out and remember to do. We have a, a very small but dedicated staff uh, who work very tirelessly throughout the year uh, for the benefit of, of the community uh, as United Way employees. And if uh, they are within earshot, um, I would like very much for them to stand and be recognized. Um, please, our Director of Finance, Cindy Gillis. Cindy. Our, our Finance Assistant and Human Resources Specialist, Kat Hoffman. Our Director of Community Relations and Marketing, Kim Allen. Our resource associate, Joe Travers. And though he is on medical leave, I understand he is with us today, Mr. Richard Knoll, who is our director of resource development. Now, 
I also want to recognize the members, the staff that we have, that people, it's one of those best kept secrets that we hold two contracts with the Department of Children and Families for both the Community Connections of Brockton program and the Family Center. And they are the most hardworking people. They are incredibly diverse. They connect with our community. Um, I would ask them all to stand. I know they're in one of the tables. Please, the, the members of the Family Center and the Community Connections, please stand and be recognized. I, I want to specifically announce to you very proudly uh, that for the last couple of months we've been in somewhat of a transition and I want to recognize uh, our coordinator of the Family Center, Dawn Fontaine, has done a terrific job in holding things together as we've gone through a hiring process. Dawn, would you stand and be recognized? She's here. Yeah. And then I would introduce to you, uh, for some of you for the first time, our new director of Community Connections of Brockton in the Family Center, Melinda Neeland, if she would stand. Before I turn it over to uh, the incredibly capable director of our board of directors, Mr. Stephen Hall, I want to leave you with a question. If you happened, imagined that you were walking into a Dunkin' Donuts, and imagine like me, you walk into the Dunkin' Donuts where it's actually, you have to play a little bit of what I call Dunkin' Do Donuts roulette. You're never sure whether you're gonna get your order, everything is chaotic behind the counter, and you're in line, and you're waiting in one of those chaotic moments. And the person behind you ends up being an elderly gentleman, and he's got kind of wild hair, and it's all over, and it's a beard, and it's somewhat unkempt. And you're kind of trying not to make eye contact because you really don't know what to say, but you start to strike up a conversation because the gentleman is a little forward and says, gee, I've had a really terrible day today. Now, if you're like me and you're in line, it's really hard to kind of not respond. So you respond and say, gee, that's too bad, what's wrong? And if the person happens to say, well, I was in an automobile accident and and, and, and so you might ask, okay, are you, were you okay? Was anybody hurt? Um, I'm pretty banged up and pretty hurt. And, and, and it's obvious that the person is, is struggling and a little physically in trouble. And again, I'm asking you to think about what you would do in this instance. Imagine that the next thing the person says, oh, I'm, this is showing you that I really have a bad day. And you happen to look down and realize that his shoelace is untied. Here's the question. Do you bend down and tie his shoelace? Just keep that, don't have to answer now. I'm gonna circle back and ask you about that later. Do you bend down and tie his shoelace? With that, I am gonna turn it over to our friend, and again, the chairman of our board, Mr. Stephen Hall. Thank you, Dennis. <laughs> it's uh, certainly a pleasure to be here uh, this afternoon. It's been my privilege to be uh, the board chair for the last couple of years with uh, this great organization. And before I uh, get on with my official duties here, I just want to recognize a couple of, uh, of folks. First of all, Dennis recognized the staff already. I had planned to do that individually, but he has already done that. So thank you to the staff. They've made life easy for me, certainly. And then um, the entire board uh, is a great collection of individuals uh, that really work hard uh, to make this United Way the very best it can, and can be. And I'm very appreciative to them in all the work that they put in. Uh, and for also putting up with me for a couple of years. In particular, I want to thank two folks. Uh, Leo McNeil was the immediate past chair. It's probably his best day today because <laughs> he gets to vacate that seat and uh, actually take a little bit of a back seat. Uh, but Leo's been quite an influence on me. Uh, he's just a, a great uh, human being and someone that uh, really represents what our United Way stands for. And I just want to thank him for making my job easy. And 
the other person I want to thank on the board is Kevin White. Um, you need someone good behind the numbers, uh, and uh, Kevin has been uh, tremendous in terms of uh, watching over all the financials and making sure that we're on board. Cindy ob obviously does a great job, but Kevin's been a great board member and someone I really learned to uh, depend on. So thank you, Kevin. <laughs> Okay, so I'll get started with my uh, official duties now. Um, the first thing I'd like to do is just um, basically recognize the event sponsors um, today. And uh, it's certainly a pleasure. <clears throat> what a great university this is, a great facility, and we're blessed to have um, Dinez on our board, as well as the full support of this uh, great institution. So with that, uh, I'd ask uh, uh, President Fred Clark, if he's here, if he'd like to get up and just say a couple of words of uh, in. Uh, our thanks for him. Here he is. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I'm not going to bend down to tie my shoe. It's too, it's too far of a, uh, a reach. But I just wanted to welcome all of you here on behalf of our 11,000 students, 2,000 employees, and 68,000 alums. Welcome on behalf of Bridgewater State uh, to our friends from the United Way. At Bridgewater State, we love the United Way. We love the sponsors and partners. Thank you, Bridgewater Savings. Thank you, Lynch and Lynch. Thank you to uh, National Grid and to all of you uh, for your support. And we are honored to be supporters as well. We love the people who work at the United Way, all the folks that have been mentioned, but I have to single out our good friend, Dennis Carmen. Last year, we were honored at Bridgewater to give a Distinguished Service Award to Dennis here at uh, graduate commencement. It really wasn't Dennis, it was the United Way through Dennis that we were honoring. And Dennis has been my personal friend for a couple of decades, and I would do anything for him, but he did ask me at graduate commencement if he could actually speak and then end with a song. And that's where I drew the line. I said, I'm sorry, Dennis, I'm not going to let you sing, as good of a singer as you are. But most importantly, we love the mission of the United Way, and I just wanted to say a couple of words. And all of the, my folks that are here from Bridgewater State that are so engaged in the United Way know this, and is Lewenberger, uh, Michelle Waken, Diane Bell, who just won an award the other day, the Athena Award from the Metro South Chamber. We're very proud of her. Um, but we are, we are very proud of the mission of the United Way. And the mission, as you know, is to improve lives by mobilizing a caring, the power of a caring community to advance the common good. Changing lives is really what you're in the business for. That's what we're in the business for here at Bridgewater State as well. My old boss, Congressman Joe Moakley, used to say to me almost every single day that real power, political power, power in life is the ability to say yes to people in need. It's very easy to say no, it's hard to say yes. And every single day at the United Way, all of you find a way to say yes to people in need, leaving no one behind. And our society, frankly, can't afford to leave anyone behind. So I thank you for your mission, thank you for your service, thank you for your partnership, and we're, we're very grateful for all of the wonderful people who work at the United Way, headed by our friend Dennis Carmen. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Dr. Clark. We uh, also are blessed to have three additional uh, event sponsors here. And uh, next up is uh, Bridgewater Savings Bank, who's been a, a long-term partner with uh, United Way. And it's my pleasure to uh, ask Peter De La Russo if you want to come forward and just say a few words. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you, Steve. Uh, and thank you, Dennis. It's, it's a pleasure to be here today and be able to sponsor this event. Uh, I want to just, first of all, uh, you know, thank all the staff members of the United Way. Uh, as a board member, uh, they do a great job in this community. I think it's, a, it's very uh, helpful to have this group uh, doing what they do in this community today. So uh, we, we hope that uh, we can continue to support the mission of the United Way and, and continue to, uh, to work with them on, a, on a, a regular basis. But uh, it's an honor to be able to sponsor this today, so thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Um, also, another event sponsor is uh, Lynch and Lynch, and uh, we have actually a board member, uh, Attorney Andrew Lynch, who uh, invite up to the podium to say hello. Yeah. 
Afternoon, folks. I, I won't belabor the point. Thank you all for coming here today. The organization would not be what it is without Dennis, without the staff, and without the very helpful board members. I'm fairly new to this kind of service here with the board, but uh, it's been nothing but an honor and a pleasure. Thank you all today for being here. Thank you. And finally, um, our last event sponsor is uh, National Grid. And uh, it's my pleasure to uh, introduce Joe Cardinal from National Grid. Thank you, everybody, for coming today. Again, I'd like to thank the board. I'm a new member on the board. It's it's great opportunity for us at National Grid to be a member of the, the, the United Way. And I, I thank Steve and I thank Dennis for their leadership at the United Way. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Um, my next order of business is to uh, announce the results of a uh, prior recommendation by our uh, governance committee, uh, which then went to a full vote of the board of directors. Uh, and that is uh, election of board members and uh, board officers. Uh, so the vote has already taken place. It's just my duty really to uh, announce to you uh, those uh, renewing board members. So we have there are three-year terms um, that run, uh, and we have two members that are being renewed for a second three-year term, and I just ask them to stand up, uh, Heather Origi and John Doyle. John, I know, is on vacation. And then secondly, uh, board officers, uh, it's also my pleasure, this is a, um, an exciting day for me because I get to, within a week or so, step down as, as chair and hand the reins over to, uh, to John Doyle from UPS uh, as the new chair. Unfortunately, John, uh, well, fortunately for him, he's on vacation and uh, um, enjoying some nice, well-deserved time off. But uh, uh, also, I'd like to introduce uh, Laurie Maker uh, from Massasoit Community College, who will be vice chair. Kevin White, who I mentioned earlier from Blum Shapiro, treasurer. Heather Origi, also mentioned earlier from Brockton Public Schools as secretary. And then myself, I will be the uh, immediate past chair. So if those folks could stand for one sec. Great, thank you. Um, I also have um, the pleasure of presenting um, in asking uh, Shana Barnes. Uh, Shana is a councilwoman, city of Brockton, uh, and she also works at uh, Congressman Steve Lynch's office. Um, she served uh, one three-year term, and due to some uh, uh, responsibilities that are increasing for her, um, she's decided that it wouldn't be appropriate for her to continue, but we want to recognize her uh, for her um, uh, all of her dedication to the to the board. So. Um, I haven't actually seen her personally yet, Shannon. Oh, there she is. Hi, Shannon. Um, if you could come forward, that would be great. Now my pleasure to bring back Dennis to the podium. <laughs> Steve may think it's easy to complete two years as the chair of the board and just walk away, but that's not how it works, Steve. <laughs> because he's given us a lot of time. We needed to give him something in recognition of that time. We understand that you have a new residence uh, on the Cape, is it? Okay. Underway. That's Underway. Okay, well, we have something that might add to this humble abode and also be a recognition of the time you've given us. So if you'd come up here. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> okay. It's a big box. Big box. <laughs> because you've given us a lot of time. We want to give you a break. Actually, this is really nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you. <laughs> you just do one of those kind of things and you forget all the other important things you're supposed to do. Hopefully not. <clears throat> um, actually, Steve and I can, can both do this. We, every year, uh, we've kind of flipped things around a little bit this year, and uh, we give away what we call the kind of volunteer award. And we used to name this after one of our past long-term finance directors who passed away due to cancer, but we stopped doing that mainly because people just didn't recognize the name. But we call it the Community Spirit Award. And it's often given to those people who've given us a lot of years in a lot of different capacities. And this year, the recipient of that award is Mr. Leo McNeil, formerly of Harbor One Bank. Leo, would you come forward? We want to bestow this award on you. Thank you, uh, Dennis, and everybody for this honor. Uh, Dennis knows how awkward and uncomfortable I feel when I get awards, so I swear to God, he said, I'll get them one last time. Uh, and uh, it's equivalent to tying my two shoelaces together, thank you. Uh, it's a privilege to be here today and get to see all my old friends that I enjoyed so much during my working years. Uh, this award, um, I hope I don't offend my Jewish friends, but marks my retirement Hanukkah. It's taken three and a half years to end my retirement experience, uh, but it's been a distinct privilege to serve on this board for many, many years, uh, and I must applaud and thank uh, as Steve and Dennis did, the board member volunteers who put in uh, a great amount of time and energy and professionalism to serve their communities. Uh, I also want to thank the staff. I want to thank the donor organizations, the uh, agency recipients, the volunteers who serve on a multitude of committees. It's been a wonderful, uh, very gratifying experience. In this age where divisiveness is prevalent all the time, and I need not speak at length about that, you know what I'm talking about, collaboration, collaboration is so very important, and that's what the United Way stands for always. People putting aside their own selfish aims to support community and those who need assistance. Uh, some of you may know that I'm, since I retired, I'm teaching English to speakers of other languages, and it is a challenge, but one of the things I was teaching last night was irregular adjectives. Good is not gooder, it's better. Good is not bet, goodest, it's best. And with that note, I want to add to Dennis's and the United Way's saying, to live better, we must live united. Rather, to live best, we must live united. I encourage all of you to continue your dedication to the United Way in various ways. Thank you so much.
Thanks again, Leo. And when he said he served multiple times on the board, let's count, there were three different times that Leo was talked onto the board for different reasons, walked away, and we kept talking him back in. Thankfully, he continued to come back, and that's really much appreciated. Um, <clears throat> we are now moving, and we're going to do this fairly quickly, because, and I want to make this qualification. We have a, a lot of people and a lot of companies in this room to be thankful for. Um, we have raised a good deal of money for our community partners, but I wouldn't be being truthful if I didn't say to you we're not raising enough money. The needs are still out there, they're still great, and we're not getting enough resources in order to give our community partners a sufficient amount of resources to adequately address the needs that are out there in the community. That said, we are incredibly appreciative of the companies that have supported us because they have bent over backwards for the largest corporate gift for at least the second or maybe the third year in a row. We'd like to recognize Ocean Spray Cranberries, and I'm not sure there's anybody here today for Ocean Spray. As I understand it, they are preparing for a very serious board meeting, and when you're an international company, that could be anywhere in the world. So we know that they are away. For the largest campaign increase, we actually have two awardees. The first is a terrific organization with a national reputation for being the number one, the number one company and they compete with one other company that I'll, that I'll mention a little bit later, but uh, UPS for the largest increase in the local campaign. So, someone from UPS. UPS guys taking the direct route, you know, they don't go around the stairs, they go right straight through. I've said this before, I live on a street that goes through three different towns, and I won't mention their names, but the other mail carriers are totally in the dark and lost, no matter how many years our street has been in existence. UPS carriers know where I live, and they deliver my packages without fail. So much appreciated. Thank you, UPS. We also want to acknowledge, for the largest increase locally, the Good Samaritan and Stewart Hospital for having a phenomenal campaign that went from several thousand dollars to 11, 12,000, I forget what the amount is, but it was a phenomenal percentage increase. They worked really hard at it and, and did a tremendous campaign. So would someone from our friends at Good Samaritan Hospital come forward? For the largest campaign increase for a nonprofit organization, one of our community partners this year doubled their campaign for the United Way. Would Father Bills and Mainspring please come forward and be recognized? Now this next company could be recognized in any number of companies, and they're special for a lot of reasons. But the main reason every year that we recognize this organization, I'd have to say, is for both their youth and enthusiasm and drive. 
Their regional director, Andrea Kershaw, runs the best United Way campaigns we have ever seen. We, when we show up to give presentations, we feel like we don't even have to be there because Andrea and her staff have everything under control. Enterprise, what you'd refer to as Enterprise Rent-A-Car or Enterprise Holding, has been a phenomenally successful United Way partner for the last number of years, and we always have trouble as to which of the several categories we could fit them in. This year, we're putting them underneath the Campaign Spirit Award because we would love to bottle whatever it is they are, they are drinking and pass it around to everybody in our community, and we wouldn't have a resource problem, but would Folks from Enterprise Holdings, come forward, please, and, and be recognized for the Campaign Spirit Award. We should uh, also um, acknowledge that Andrea is not here only because she's had not only one operations on a hip, but two hip operations, the only thing I think that kept her from being here. So we really appreciate again Andrea and, and Enterprise for all they do. So thank you again. The next awardee, when I mentioned earlier that uh, Good Samaritan in the Stewart Healthcare System did a phenomenal campaign there was a person who they credited with being responsible for that success. Her name is Jenna, and I'm going to mess this up because I can never say it correctly. So I'm going to actually try to read this one, folks. Um, I want to say it's McMenemy, but that's not quite right. All right. McFellamy. McFellamy. I'm sorry I'm not pronouncing it right. But she was so successful at doing this that they promoted her out of the area, right, to another office. I, you know, I want to talk to you CEOs about this. When we get somebody who successfully runs the United Way campaign, please don't promote them to another position. You can pay them more money, that's okay, but don't promote them out of the area. Um, but Jenna um, had, had acknowledged that her new duties would not allow her uh, to be present today, but we want to recognize her and once again, uh, Good Samaritan for, for their tremendous work. And if somebody from Good Sam wants to come and grab this award, that would be great. We have another awardee who we know can't be there because they're going through at our, our friends at Macy's an audit. And we understand that a lot, it's one of those hands on deck when you're going through an audit. But Karen Eccles not only was incredibly helpful to the campaign, but we have for the last several years done an extensive winter coat drive that benefits several of the organizations in the area. And Karen very patiently helps us with not only discounted items, but she helps us with the ordering and matching of sizes, and it takes an incredible amount of one's day, but both the organization, Macy's, and Karen have been phenomenal in making our winter coat drive, keeping kids warm, um, a success in the last number of years that it's, that it's done. But, and we will, we've already told Karen that we will deliver her award directly to her and Macy's, but uh, once again, and I should say this, you know, when we announce the awardees for all these awards, please, if you're in this audience and you hear a company that gets recognized, please consider doing business with that company. It's really important that we keep those people who are supporting our United Way in business, otherwise we're not going to be in business. So consider that. So thank you to Karen and thank you again to Macy's for that. The next award is for what we call United Way Ambassador. Someone who not only is good at presenting United Way to their company, 
but has been good about serving and pointing us in the direction of other companies that might support United Way, just an all-around supporter of United Way. And uh, the next person we were honoring is Mr. John Lapsley, and do I understand that he is also away? In, in, in California, correct. And the business? I keep on business. So we, we know it's California. We're a little suspect if it's business. But we're going to take Joe's word because he trusts John at his word. So another awardee. No, probably not. Okay. Finally, and again, this is always a challenge for us to acknowledge the, the organization, the company that wins what we call the Chairman's Award. Um, because every year it could go to any number of your organizations. But this organization, every year, not only does a terrific employee, uh, employee uh, campaign, they have a terrific board of directors that votes an incredibly generous match. They allow us to do presentations at every one of their branches and multiple presentations at their corporate headquarters every year. We have multiple numbers of people who are on our allocations panel every year, and they are always good about co-branding with us and remembering United Way, and uh, I don't think it should be any of a surprise for people who've been here a while, but the Chairman's Award this year is going to Harbor One Bank. I should also, from the podium, thank our friend Peggy Watts from Harbor One, but who also is a wicked, wicked good photographer. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for that show. Thank you. Now I'm going to ask you to turn your attention to the big screen. We're going to take uh, turn the lights down a little bit. We have been very fortunate this year to have been able to develop a United Way campaign video. You're seeing it for the first time. It's a premiere, uh, and it's great to be at Bridgewater State with this big screen, thinking we've got surround sound and all of it. Pretend you've got some popcorn going. Um, we are thankful for uh, attorney Stephen Trifoletti from Trifoletti and Costa, who also happens to be the town moderator for the town of Plymouth, who was willing to donate his vocal talents for this video. We also are thankful for some of the script for the National United Way Worldwide. We've crafted it and localized it. And then finally, we'd like to thank our friends at PAC TV, even though we're going to have to be very clear and say we're being recorded on Brockton area cable TV access, but they work well together. But our friends at PAC happen to allow us to use the studio to record this, so hopefully you will enjoy it. Uh, relax and, and let us know later what you, what you think. But roll them, as they say in the biz. Problems. 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 The ones most people would like to avoid. The ones nobody talks about at cookouts or cocktail parties. The ones that seem impossible to solve. We go looking for them. In urban areas, troubled towns, and seemingly quiet suburbs. We find every dollar we can to address them. But we are more than the fundraisers. We are the hand raisers, the game changers. The stop talking, start doing, band together, and take on the impossible taskmasters. United, we face opioid addiction in Carver. United, we stand up for adults and children with developmental challenges in Plymouth and Brockton. United, we battle for our veterans in Greater Plymouth County who have fought valiantly for us in remote parts of the globe. United, we confront the struggles of homeless children and families in all of the towns of southeastern Massachusetts. No matter the obstacles, no matter the odds, we zero in on our community's most critical problems. And we fight, we fight for Maria. We fight for John. We fight for Jamal and Sarah and Natasha. We fight for those who need a voice and those whose names we do not know. United Way fights for the health, education, and financial stability of every person in Greater Plymouth County. 
But change does not just happen by itself. Hope is not a one-man band. Most of us were not self-taught or self-made. We need each other. And we have just one life to live. So, to live better, we must live united. A great deal of thanks also goes to Kim Allen, our Director of Community Relations and Marketing, who really put it all together and uh, really much appreciated. <laughs> Moving swiftly through the program, are you, you guys catching your breath? Is it too fast? I can't slow down because we don't have time. So we're going to move on, and, and we're going to move on to something important. As we recognize all of the organizations that support us with, with their resources and their volunteers, and we make a pitch and a plea for the continued support, we want to start to focus on some of the outcomes and some of the results of what happens. And the next award is something we refer to as the Courage Award. And it is simply an award given to an individual or a family that takes advantage of the services provided through the United Way. Normally we reach out to our community partners and ask them to nominate some different people. This year, because we wanted to highlight the important work that gets done through our family center, we asked the staff at the family center would they look through their files and basically think about instances of people who've gone through their program and really taken advantage of the terrific services that are available. The services that are available through the Family Center are a gamut. They run an array of services of trying to connect people with services that they might need, trying to make sure that we, we do some case management, we connect them to some of our funded partners, we work with the schools and the court systems in order to reduce the stressors that lead to child abuse and neglect with the understanding that if the Family Center does its job, then we will see children who will not be likely to be abused. We will see families that are strong, families that are resilient, families that know how to access services. So, this year we asked the staff, as I mentioned, to come up with someone that they thought typified the person who showed courage, took advantage of services, and made a difference in their lives and the lives of the people around them. I'm going to ask uh, Dawn Fontaine, the coordinator of the Family Center, to come up to talk about this year's recipient, if I can. When we were asked to find a family or somebody that um, we could recognize with who had coverage, for us it was a, a pretty simple um, task. We have a gentleman that came to us um, wanting to get custody of his children, wanting to be a nurturing and loving father, and so was sort of forced to come to us. He was a little reluctant. That was four or five years ago. <laughs> um, and I have to say, he hasn't left us yet. Um, but one of the greatest things that um, I would say is that life's not always easy. Um, when we talk about coverage, it's not about the falling down, but how we get back up. And when this gentleman was having a really difficult time, um, he lost his son um, to a terrible hit and run accident. He came to us, the family center, the one that had always welcomed him and gave him support to help him through this difficult time. So coverage is not defined by those who fought and did not fall, but those who fought, fell, and rose again those who fought, fell, and rose again. Larry, you certainly deserve this coverage award.
want to. You don't have to. Okay. I'll tell you if you want to. I, I mean, I'm really grateful to, to get this award. And uh, last night I was just thinking that, uh, okay, so I'll, I'll have to say something. I had no idea what I was going to say. I stayed up all night just trying to figure out, well, okay, what, what can I say? So I think I finally, uh, I finally got it. So thank you. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I hope you're starting to feel as good as I do when you hear things like that. It's part of the, the advantage and the blessings of the work that gets done for all the frustrations when you see a person take advantage in the most positive way of services and turn not only his own life around, but to reach out and help someone else. Um, it just really makes it, uh, it, it allows us all who are in this field and, and doing this work uh, to continue to do it. The winners of the poster contest, and I'm going to let um, Kim explain uh, the, or, or name the winners, but the idea was to have children draw what they thought their ideal community is and to fit in with today's theme of to live better, or as Leo said, to live best, we must live united. And don't you think the kids did a terrific job? Yeah, give them a hand. And you'll see pictured up on the screen the winners that are around the table, and I'm going to ask Kim to come. And again, thank you, Bridgewater Savings, for being such a terrific sponsor of what is a terrific, terrific thing. Kim? Thank you, Dennis. You made it very easy for me. Um, so I have to say, we got 35 terrific submissions from our partner agency, Brockton Day Nursery. And the winners, pictured here, starting in the left and going clockwise, are Alishiana, age 10, Alexa, age 6, Maya, age 9, and Zanea, age 6. So each one of these four winners will receive one of the beach bags that you see in the corner over here that are filled with some fun summer goodies as well as some books as well. So hopefully they can hang out at the beach and play but also get some reading done. So thank you again to both Brockton Day Nursery and to Bridgewater Savings for sponsoring this awesome event. And you'll see these posters out on the campaign trail this year as well. We have two main things to complete and a couple other cool things. So hang around because we've got a terrific speaker coming up uh, in Kevin Stevens, uh, former NHL star, who's got a lot of good things to talk to you about. But before that, we want to bring up four of some of the most impressive, compassionate human beings that I've had the blessing to know over a lot of years of being in the human services. And I'm going to name them one at a time, but ask them all to come up um, on the stage. And when I was doing the math, I thought to myself, it's kind of neat because I can get up here and say, we're going to witness over a century of compassionate care for youth and families and elders and people who have low income. And when I started to add it up, I was wrong. It's almost two centuries, and I don't want to make the recipients feel old, but I do want to recognize not only the experience and the talent, but the compassion more than anything else of these four individuals who we thought it was appropriate to come up with. When we come up every year with these series of awards called the Common Good Awards, we try to make it different. And this year, it occurred to us as a number of people were either retiring or near retirement, that it was important to recognize these four people. And you'll see them up uh, on, on in here. I'm going to bring them up, and I'm going to allow you. You know how they say, wait to hold your applause to the end? I don't want you to do that. I want, with every name that I mention, I want to hear thunderous applause. You can bang on the tables. Don't break too many of them. Bridgewater, you know, 
It's a nonprofit institution, you know, so be careful about that. But I'm going to ask these people to come up, please, to this stage, and I, I'm going to be overwhelmed because they are just tremendous, tremendous people. So first I'm going to ask Pat Daly, the newly retired executive director of the South Shore Community Action Council. I am going to ask to come, not retired yet, but I think she's dreaming about it, the President and CEO of the Brockton and Visiting Nurse Association, Beverly Pavaceres. How did we get you in the back of the room? <laughs> we usually plan better than that, Bev. <laughs> Thank you. Also recently retired after 38 years working for the Old Colony YMCA, its Chief Operating Officer, Jeffrey Russell. Now, wouldn't you have expected a guy who's run at least two Boston marathons to have leaped onto the stage? He's not paying attention. I'm making fun of you and you're not paying attention. I'm saying we expected somebody who's been a runner in, in the Boston Marathon for at least two times to leap up on the stage. I was tempted to. All right, okay. <laughs> All right, he was thinking about it. 50 mile run this morning, Oh, okay. He knows how to stretch the truth just as well as he stretches resources. <laughs> Last and certainly not least, recently retired as well, Mr. Rick Stritzinger, who is the head of the Old Colony Boy Scouts of America and many, many other troops and many other involvements in the scouting organization. <laughs> you are going to <laughs> I'm, I, I'm tempted to do a roast on all of you for some reason, but I, I honestly, I, I honestly, I have to tell you this. Every time I thought about this idea, which got better and better with each person we thought about honoring, it is such a tremendous, tremendous thing for you to see. These are the best examples of people who give of themselves every day whether it's talking the Scouts or the Y or the Visiting Nurse Association or the, the a Community Action Council that serves the low income, those people who need help and who, without whose help wouldn't get to where they're going to. We're talking, and I'm, I'm not exaggerating because I started doing some numbers, we're talking hundreds of thousands of lives being impacted by these individuals and the organizations and the people they work with. What makes them special beyond their willingness to do this is that they, they reach out for partners, they become inspirations for all of us. And it was one of the easiest tasks I had this year when we came up with the list of these folks and I thank you all very much. Please give them a standing round of ovation. Give them a standing ovation. What kept going through my mind as, as Peggy is saying, come on, get in the picture, is I don't feel worthy, I don't feel worthy. Um, these are really awesome, awesome, awesome people. Jeff, somebody's trying to get your attention. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you for what you do every day. Much appreciated. All right. Let's hope I haven't forgotten anything else. Um, and again, stick around, because we're, need, we're needing to announce the raffle winners. And we want to thank 
Um, several organizations, before I forget to do that, um, Harbor One for donating our Red Sox tickets, 1620 for giving us a nice overstay, and the Plymouth Area Chamber of Commerce for giving us uh, one of those fancy Fitbits. Did I forget something? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I did forget something. I love forgetting something important. Okay. When we were comprising the Lifetime Achievement Awards, it occurred to us, something that only a few of you know at this point. I had mentioned earlier that our friend and colleague, Rick Knoll, is on a medical leave, but he's with us today. He doesn't know this. But he let us know that, for a number of reasons, he will not be returning to United Way after the medical leave he's going to retire, which is a great sadness to us, given not only his experience and all that he's done for our United Way, but some of you might not know this, he was at our United Way years ago when it was the old Colin United Way, and a number of years before that, worked for the United Way of Massachusetts Bay and Merrimack, well, it wasn't Merrimack Valley then, it was the United Way of Massachusetts Bay, the, the big United Way to the north of us. Um, so Rick has had probably 25 or more years working for local United Ways and in the United Way system. We didn't think it was appropriate for the day to go by for our 95th annual meeting and campaign celebration to acknowledge his lifetime achievement, not only in just community impact, but in the United Way system. So if Mr. Knoll would come forward, we would like to recognize him for the lifetime achievement. Now there's a few people I have to beat up when this is over. Um, I, I still don't have all my breathing back. For those who don't know, I was diagnosed with lung cancer back in March. Um, I've had the surgery and, you know, everybody keeps saying, you're really lucky, you're really lucky that you don't need anything more and you're all right for now. But the funny part of it is I've changed the word lucky to blessed. Because when you get something like this, it, you start to think about your life and what's important. My wife, Marianne, and I have always been the people that have said, someday we're going to do this. So when all of this happened, I said, I think it's time we start doing the things we said we'd do. But I'm so blessed. I look out at this room, and I'm so blessed to have worked with all of you. I tell you, you've got the best, best staff I've ever worked with, from Dennis to Joe to Kim to Kat, who's the only one in this room that really gets me except for my wife, <laughs> and Cindy. Fantastic people will do anything for you, anything for their community. So I just wanted to say thank you so much. Thank you, all of you. An author, that's how you walk up on the stage. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Now, if, if all of that wasn't enough, right, we are delighted. I have to tell you, uh, we are delighted um, to have our next speaker, our keynote speaker, uh, Mr. Kevin Stevens. And um, beyond what you might have read in the paper, what was terrific for me was to actually sit down with Kevin and have a conversation and realize that as, as an amazing hockey star as he has been, he is, he is an incredible human being, and he's gone through a lot. And I am going to, because I, I there, just, and hopefully I have this, have this somewhere in my papers, I am going to read you this, because I don't know that I could have put this together any better. Did, did, did your sister write this, Kevin? Did she, he did. She, yeah, she, with some help from you, yeah. When she didn't highlight enough of the good things, she added them in. Anyway, Kelly Wilson is here with us. Kevin's sister, and we appreciate you both being here. Um, so I'm just going to read this by way of introduction. 
Kevin graduated from Silver Lake Regional High School in Kingston, where he captained the hockey, football, and baseball teams. Kevin was invited to try out for both the Toronto Blue Jays and the Philadelphia Phillies. He admitted he couldn't hit the curveball, so he decided to pursue hockey. Kevin received a full hockey scholarship to Boston College, where he was a two-time All-American and captain of the BC Eagles team. In 1983, he was drafted by the Los Angeles Kings, and his rights would be traded to the Pittsburgh Penguins shortly thereafter. With big dreams of making it to the NHL, Kevin smartly elected to finish his degree at BC in the event he may have to get a real job. Kevin graduated from BC in 1987. From there, Kevin represented the U.S. national hockey team at the 1987 World Championships and was a member of the 1988 U.S. hockey team at the Winter Olympics in Calgary, Canada. He then went on to play for the Pittsburgh Penguins, where he became one of the top left wingers and power forwards in the National Hockey League. Kevin put up some impressive stats. Four straight seasons, 1990 to 1994, with greater than 40 goals and 80 points. Over 50 goals and 100 points in back-to-back -back seasons, 1991 and 92, and 1992 to 93, with the Pittsburgh Penguins. Kevin became only the third person to outscore Wayne Gretzky in a regular season. In 1991 to 92, Kevin had 123 points that year, a record for most points by an American-born left winger in one season. One back-to-back -back Stanley Cups in 1990 to 91 and 1991 to 92. Three-time NHL All-Star. Only Penguin on the team to play in every regular season and playoff games during two Stanley Cup wins. Kevin is only one of four NHL players to score more than 50 goals and rack up 200 penalty minutes in one season. Now, if you're a hockey fan, you're loving that. It is the only sport on the planet that you actually cheer when you get guys thrown in the penalty box because you figure the other guys deserve to get landed in the chops, right? That was, that was it. Kevin set the record of 17 goals scored during the 1990-1991 playoffs. In Game 3 of the Prince of Wales Conference Final versus the Boston Bruins, now here, Kevin, please permit us to boo. May 21, 1993, Kevin became only the 25th player in NHL history to score three goals in a single period. He had a hat trick in the first period and would go on to score another goal before the end of the game. Penguins swept the Bruins in that series and subsequently swept the Chicago Blackhawks to win their second straight Stanley Cup. We can boo about the knocking the Bruins out, right? But we'll, we'll, we'll applaud you for the Stanley Cup. That's a good thing. <laughs> One year later, on May 14, 1993, the Penguins were playing the New York Islanders in Game 7 of the Patrick Division Finals. Early in the first period, Kevin skated hard and checked Islanders defenseman Rich Pilon, but hit Pilon's visor with so much force that it knocked Kevin unconscious. Kevin landed face first on the ice, having been knocked out. He was unable to soften the blow when he landed. Kevin shattered most of the bones in his face and required extensive reconstructive surgery. Doctors cut an incision below his hairline from ear to ear, which was later closed with over 140 stitches, peeled back his skin, and reassembled the bones in Kevin's face with the use of nine metal plates. This is where the real story begins. I give you Mr. Kevin Stevens. Thanks, guys. Wow. You know my sister wrote that. I don't know all that stuff. I can tell you that right now. That's none of, uh, none of what I uh, can remember. I remember a lot of it. But um, thanks. When Dennis came to me and asked me here to 
to speak at the lunch, and I, I thought it was going to be 10 or 12 people, not 200 people, so <laughs> I said yes. Yeah. So um, my story is a little bit, um, I'll, I'll just start from the beginning. I, um, like I said, I grew up here, you know, you hear it a lot, I grew up here in Pembroke, and I, um, I went to Silver Lake, and um, what I'm actually going to talk to you about is, you know, obviously it's addiction. You know, addiction is part of my life, and it hit me at a certain time, and I'll kind of give you my, uh, my life story, how it all affected me, how I got to it, you know. Um, like I said, I grew up here in Pembroke. I went to Silver Lake, and I, you know, I was an athlete. I love sports. I love playing any sport, and that was my whole life, you know. And I, um, from Silver Lake, I was lucky enough to get a scholarship to go to Boston College to play hockey, and um, and I loved it. You know, hockey was hockey was my life. I loved baseball. I was going to try to play baseball there, but I, was, I ended up playing hockey there, and um, we had some great teams, great teammates. I loved everything about the team. You know, my. My whole life was being with my teammates and kind of like, you know, being with the guys. I was a guy's guy, I guess you can say. And um, from there, we had four great years there, and I, went, I was lucky enough to get on, uh, play on the Olympic team in 1988 in Calgary. That was, um, you know, that was, that was great. You know, that was a great year. I traveled around nine months with my friends, like living in hotels, traveling around playing teams, and it was, everything was great, to, you know, and I was, um, I was kind of going along pretty smooth. My life was, you know, <laughs> pretty good. You know, if you're a, if you're a boy, a young boy, or I'm becoming a man, a young man now, this is, you know, pretty much what I thought about when I was a young kid. I was going to be, be play hockey. You know, I was, I was fulfilling that dream. I was playing. Um, so from the Olympic team, we, um, in Calgary, we finished like six. We didn't make a medal. We didn't get a medal, but it was um, a great experience. And from there, I went to Pittsburgh in February, right after the Olympics. And, um, Play, started my career in Pittsburgh, which was was a great place to play. You know, I had uh, I loved playing hockey. I loved being in Pittsburgh when I first got there. I kind of just fit in right away. I had great teammates, great friends, you know, great everything. And uh, hockey was my life. And it was, um, you know, what else could I ever want is um, is to be in the NHL. You know, I came from Pembroke. I was kind of like. You know, I, I worked very hard to where I got. It was it was something that um, I never I didn't know if I was going to be a hockey. I didn't know if I could. I didn't know what I was going to do if I didn't play hockey. So it was, <laughs> I said, hopefully I'll play hockey. And uh, I got I got to Pittsburgh and had some great years. Great teammates. I played. You know, my my centerman was Mario Lemieux, probably you know one of the best players I ever played. I played alongside him for six years and you know very fortunate. And you know we we were winning. We won a couple of Stanley Cups and. You know, we kind of went back to back Stanley Cups, and um, you know our third team was probably our best year, our best team we lost. But but it, through that whole process, you know, um, my life was great. Like I, I couldn't be any happier in my life. I couldn't have been any higher in my life. You know, winning Stanley Cups, I'm scoring a lot of goals. I'm a big part of a team, and that's all I ever wanted my whole life. And um, so next year, '93, the next year, we kind of this is where the story kind of takes a little bit of a spin, a big spin, because it was, um, we, we, were, we were actually, you know, we we're actually in New York City. This is uh, in the middle of the season, and we're kind of going, not, no, toward the end of the season, we're kind of going through our third cup in New York City. It's a Saturday night. I've been drinking. I've been out with my friends, and um, I probably made the worst decision I could make in my life. You know, it was a five-minute decision. You know, someone, I was in a nightclub, and someone handed me something. And I'm 28 years old. I've never done a drug in my life. Didn't I never smoked pot. I never did anything. And um, someone handed me this little white like thing, and, and, and obviously it was cocaine. And it was something that um, I said. I kind of looked at. It, I said, you know, what, what should I? You know, I didn't really know. So I, I, you know, I was drunk. So I went into the, and I did it. It was probably the worst, the worst decision I ever made in my life. From that night on, the next 24 years of my life were chaos. You know, it was um, a decision I made in five minutes and pretty much ruined my life. From being that, you know, elite, elite hockey player, being the top left winger in the game, which is probably the best left winger in the world because the NHL is the best, addiction kind of hit me. And addiction, you know, now I know about addiction. I was, you know, I was, um, when I first did it, I kind of said, wow, you know, I, I felt something different in my mind, you know, and I, and I set off this compulsion, I set off this, 
this thing I had. I probably have had this my whole life. I've had this disease, but I haven't kicked it off. You know, I never, I never, I never did anything. I never did. All I did was play hockey. I drank, but I never did anything to activate this disease. And when I activated this disease at 28 years old, I'm 52 now. Probably I've been sober about 13 months, but from that point on, for 24 years, that ran my life. You know, we all talk about, it's hard for like some of the people like you guys, you, we're all, you guys, are, there's probably not a lot of addicts, uh, but everybody has addiction. They've known people, you know, the opiate addiction where people have lost people and friends. You know, it's hard to understand like for the normal people. Like I'm an addict, I'm, a, I'm addicted to paying anything. You know, and, and this, for me, it ran, you know, I, I had all my friends, I, I was the best teammate. The best teammate I was, I wasn't a good teammate anymore. I was a husband, I wasn't a good husband anymore. I was a father, I wasn't a good father. Like all these things that I hear now and I know now, addiction, it just takes, it takes everything. You know, and if any of you guys, any, whoever has that in their family or is addicted, they understand that. And, and people say, why can't, why can't Kevin stop? Now, why isn't, well, he's got everything, and I did have everything, but I couldn't stop. You know, I couldn't stop because I didn't know about addiction. You know, I, I didn't know what, it, you know, I, I played hockey, you know, and like, you know, the year, the first time I did that cocaine, about four months later is where I really get addicted to opiates. That's when I got my injury. You heard him, you know, Dennis said that, um, and that's when the first time I did a pain pill, I kind of been, my brain was activated in the compulsion because of the cocaine. Now, now I get hurt and I get the opiates. And that's where, that's where I ran my life for the next, I don't know, 15 years, whatever it was, the cocaine. I didn't, once the opiates came into my life, that was, that's what I wanted. And that was um, a long time, it's a long battle. You know, it's like I said, it's, it's something that's, um, it hurts, but you can't rest. Like addiction is something that you have to deal with. You have to, you need help. Like, I needed help. I needed support. I went to all these rehabs. I went to the best rehabs in the world. You know, and I'd stay there for 30 or 45 days. i come out and go right back into hockey. I had no recovery. I had no, like, support groups, which we all need. You know, you guys know the United Way. What Daniel was telling you, you know, it's all about people helping people. And I need help from people, support groups for me to stay clean and sober because I'm an addict, and, and, that's, and, I, and I accept that now, but it took me a long time, because I, I was this athlete that thought, you know, I could get through this. I have will, willpower, I can work through it, but it's really not, um, we all know, like I know it's not willpower, it's a disease, and it has to be rested, and you have to work on it day at a time, you know? It's something that, um, that I have, and I accept that I have it, and but, uh, it took me a lot of pain. Like it took me a lot of pain to get where I gotta get. And um, like I said, like a lot of us know about addiction. A lot of us have that in our family. And, and it's tough. You know, we try to help people that don't want to be helped. People tried to help me. You know, I didn't want to be helped. I wanted to live the life. I thought it was okay, doing these certain things, doing things that I look back now that like it's so crazy, and so not me. You know, but it was. The addiction pretty much run my life, and it, it ran me into the ground. I had to lose everything, you know. Um, Dennis talks about, you know, newspapers. Like, I had to get arrested to get into this program and to realize and to really sit down and say, you know, what is causing my problems? You know, what, you know, it was addiction. It was everything. Every time I got in trouble, it had to do with something I was doing addiction and ran my life for 25 years and um, you know I had to go and sit there for six days in jail and think about like what I have to change and I think that's the biggest thing about you know addicts is they need to change like I needed to change a lot of things everything basically I needed support groups I needed people to help me I had to let people help me I didn't think I needed people to help me because I you know I was you know thought I could do it on myself but once I let people in and once I let people try to help me and go to certain groups and, and life's become easier. Life's become a lot better, you know. I, like I said, I lost, I was at, up here and I had to lose, you know. So I said, I, I've had, <clears throat> I had 27 great years. I had 24 bad years. 
And hopefully I can have 25 more good years, you know, if I can say um, clean and sober. That's, that's the biggest thing for me in my life, is keep myself clean and sober a day at a time, because that's the only thing that's going to save my life. We all know about this opiate crisis out here that if I go out there and, and do it use, I'm going to die. I know that. That's just what happens these days. It doesn't matter if you're 18 or 52. You know, it's, it's, it, it doesn't matter. Because, you know, it's always, you know, I see a lot of, go to a lot of funerals, a lot of wakes of people, and no one thinks it's going to be them. That's the problem. Like, we, I never, I thought I was invisible. Nothing's ever going to happen to me, you know? And I know other friends that have passed and died. Nothing was going to happen. These guys are strong. And that one day, it takes your life. And that's, how, that's what addiction does. It's, it's very, 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 very serious right now, and it's very, very scary to a guy like me because that's what I am. You know, I can live a day at a time and live a very good life. You know, I'm very happy now. It took me a long time to kind of get to this and lose and lose and lose, but it doesn't matter. I have 25, if I, you know, I'm 52. If I can live to I'm 75, I can have 22 more good years and, you know, hopefully bring something positive because I had, I was very positive for 28 years very negative for 24 years and hopefully I can bring something back into this world for 25 years. So that's my story, guys. And uh, if I can help anybody, I'm here. Talk to me. Whatever you got to do, I'm here. Thanks. Please, we got a couple of things we're going to do and, and wrap up. But um, beyond all the good things that, that Kevin brings, and, and that's hard to deliver a message like that. Most of you, or many of you in this room, know that I was raised in a family where there was, I was the son of an alcoholic. Um, I am thankful um, to, to the Lord for the recovery programs. Um, and I think the fact that there is an AA and an NA program, and there are people who are looking out for each other who are themselves in recovery is a terrific thing. It is terrific that there are treatment organizations out there. As Kevin says, sometimes it does take people being arrested, and that's part of what it takes to get people where they need to be. We're working really hard in our world to get people to understand that people in addictions are human beings like you or I, and that it can happen to anybody, and I think that's what Kevin was saying. We're excited that he was willing to do this. I have to tell you, uh, as far as I know, this is the first time he's done anything like this. I hope it's not the last, because I think it's a great message that we need to hear, and a lot of people need to hear, to make sure that a lot of other people don't fall into the, to the abyss. Right? Thank you for being here. Can you give yourselves a round of applause? Because it is, you're the best. I started by asking you a question. And I have to tell you that that little story is a real story. And, and I will let you know what happened in my instance, because I learned something important. The question was, do we bend down and tie the lace of the shoe of the old man? I would think that someone who, that Larry Brown, who received our Courage Award, knows the answer to this. I absolutely know that Rick Stritzinger from the Scouts, that Jeff Russell from the Old Colony Y, that Pat Daly from Community South Shore Community Action and Bev Pavaceros from the Brockton Visiting Nurse Association, they know the answer to this one. They don't need to be told. I think you all know the answer too. But here's the thing that I learned in my situation, was the first thing you do is you ask the old man, do you want me to tie your shoe? Because that's a sign of respect. We need to meet people at their need where they are. We need to connect with them that they're first and foremost fellow human beings on this planet, and they probably, before we judge them, we need to walk that mile in their shoe. So before you even think to do the good thing, ask them if that's something they want you to do. My guess is the answer will be a, a really terrific and, and, a, and a heartfelt yes, 
and there will be an appreciation. When we reach down to bend and tie the shoelace of those people who are in need, we make a difference in our world. We need you at United Way to continue making a difference in our world. We need your support, not only your financial resources. We need you to volunteer your very valuable human resources because who you know and what you know is even more valuable than your contributions. I know you might not believe me when I say that. Don't mean that you don't contribute to United Way. <laughs> but, I, but what I mean is you are valuable for the human being that you are and the good that you can do. I thank you for being there. I thank you, Kevin. I thank all of the recipients of the awards this, this afternoon. Please keep supporting our United Way of Greater Plymouth County. Kevin is willing to do some autographs, and we've got this really wicked cool, or dare I say it, wicked pissa cool <laughs> picture of Kevin on the ice, and he's willing to sign some autographs. So if you want to do that, we've got a table set up out in the hall, and he'll be able to do that. Thank you for being here and celebrating our 95th annual meeting and campaign celebration. We'll see you soon. I have a job for you to do. I want to make sure you sign something.